Reading data from files. That's definitely not one of the rarer operations you perform as a developer. Most libraries hide the fact from you that they somehow read the configuration or other files and load all that into memory, but it is always there. Want to read a configuration file, load an Excel sheet with the rapidly declining value of your salary, or even check your mom's weight from last month? Well, you will have to learn how to read data from files. Rust does of course have several ways to do it, because why the hell not? And this is why in this video we will go through five different ways of reading data from files in Rust with different levels of flexibility and different advantages and disadvantages. Let's get into it. This method is probably the most simple one you can use in Rust. Just extend your main function by letting it return a result unit error first. Then import stdfs. And now you can simply use fs read to string with a path. Read to string takes that path, tries to open the file associated with it, and then reads all of that file's contents into a string. One line of code, that's all you need. Let's quickly look at both the advantages and disadvantages of this method. This method is an excellent choice if your file contains UTF-8 encoded string content and is small enough so you can process it as a whole at once. But there are also a few disadvantages with this method. If the file is too large, this method might have severe performance impacts. Additionally, the larger the file, the more memory your program needs to allocate. Lastly, files that do not contain UTF-8 encoded string content cannot be processed this way. Overall, this method is probably the best choice for most use cases where you deal with string content and smaller files. The next method is something for occasions where you deal with some form of binary data. You can start with the main function that returns a result again. Next, import stdfs again. This time, you can use fsread. Like read to string, the function takes a path, but returns a byte vector this time. This byte vector contains the binary contents of that specific file. From this point on, you can decide how to deal with the data yourself. If you somehow still want to convert that data into a string, you can import stdstr first, and then use str from utf8 to convert the binary data into a utf8 encoded string. Let's look at the advantages and disadvantages again. This method is a good choice if your file contains binary data of any form and can be processed all at once. The disadvantages are nearly the same as for the last method. If the file is too large, this method might have severe performance impacts. And the larger the file, the more memory your program needs to allocate. You can use this method if you have smaller files that contain data in some binary format. Sometimes files are too large to be processed all at once. You either have memory constraints or you simply want to work in a more efficient way. Start from the main function again and import stdfs file and stdio buff reader and buff read. You can now first try to open your file and then pass that file reference to a buff reader. This buff reader optimizes the way you read from the file by using an internal buffer. Not all calls you do lead to file system access, which optimizes the operation a little. Next, you can let the buff reader create an iterator over the lines of that file by calling lines and process them in a loop each at a time. Technically, that's already a large improvement over processing the whole file at once. But like all other methods, this one has its own advantages and disadvantages. It's of course a great choice if your file contains string content and is also pretty useful if your file is too large to be processed at once. But this method only works for string content and implementations using it can become complex. Especially if the formatting of that file is a little off, you might need to additionally buffer lines yourself until you have enough content to do something useful with it. Overall, well-formatted files, especially ones you have written yourself, can be efficiently processed with this method. Sometimes you can't read lines from a file. You might actually need one of the most basic methods available, reading single bytes. Start with your main function once again, and this time import stdfs file and stdio buff reader as well as read. Like before, you can get a reference to your file by using file open. And a buff reader is the base again to perform further read operations. This time, you can use the function bytes that returns an iterator over individual bytes. This allows you to loop through each individual byte and process it in a way that you find suiting. Usually, 
you will want to buffer the individual bytes yourself until you have enough to do something useful with them. But that is totally up to you. This method, of course, also has a few advantages and disadvantages we can take a look at now. It's a great method to use if you want full control over what happens with the contents of a file. And additionally, you won't have too many problems with the size of the file and the memory consumption of your program, as you can decide yourself how much data you actually want to keep in memory. But you have to work with raw data in this case. And often, a single byte is not enough to do something useful with. So you will somehow have to buffer data yourself until you can process a chunk successfully. If you want the rawest method available and do all the processing yourself, this is the way for you to go. If processing single bytes is a little too raw for you, you can also let a buff reader handle the chunking for you. This doesn't guarantee that you always have exactly the right chunk with the right size, but it could be an improvement over the last method. You can, for the last time, start from your main function and import stdfs file as well as stdio buff reader and buff read. Like before, you can use file open to get a file reference. But this time, however, you instantiate the buff reader with a specific capacity for its internal buffer. Now create an infinite loop and use fill buff as the first operation. This fills the buffer of the reader and returns its contents. You can stop the loop if the buffer length is ever zero, because this means that all contents of the file have been consumed. Now do something with the buffer's contents and lastly consume the length of the buffer. This prevents you from reading the same part of the file again. And that's it. For the last time, we can look at the advantages and disadvantages of this method. You still have full control over how you process the file. And it gives you probably the most flexibility as you can easily set the chunking size dynamically. Lastly, large files are no problem at all as you only read data in chunks. Naturally, there are also a few disadvantages though. You have to handle raw data in this case. And it might take a few tries for you to set the right buffer size. And importantly, if you don't get the chunking size right, you might negatively impact the performance of your implementation. Overall, this method is a great general choice, as it sits right in the middle of flexibility, control and automatism. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you learned a thing or two and now know your way around reading data from files in Rust. Now go ahead and experiment a little. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss more videos like this. Until then, see you in the next video.